So we are going to look at the importance of graphs, what happens when graphs go wrong, and how to choose the right graph. So why are graphs important? Graphs help us visualize patterns. And what that means is it allows us to see trends or even draw conclusions from the data that we have collected. It's really a way to help us analyze the data from our experiment. So what happens when a graph goes wrong? Well, a graph that goes wrong is impossible to read or draw any meaningful information from. If we look at this pie chart, all of these numbers are meaningless to us. We have no idea what they mean. Same thing over here, like, are we reading right to left or left to right? Who knows? This graph just looks like a tangle, in, like in your shoelaces, like it just looks like a knot. It's not helpful. It doesn't tell us anything meaningful, even though we know we're supposed to be getting distance from downtown to from major airports, that doesn't tell us anything meaningful. And then finally, like, is anything actually different here? How is this meaningful? Hard to know. So there are lots of different types of graphs and it's supposed to provide meaning for the data. So looking at this, these are all the same data set, just graphed differently. And it should be easy to tell which one gives you the best way to draw conclusions from that data set. So what types of graphs do we have? First, we have pie charts or pie graphs. These help us visualize how a population breaks down into subgroups. So we have 100% of the population and then it's broken down into smaller parts. Then we have bar graphs. Bar graphs allow us to compare discrete numbers. Remember, a discrete number is self-contained. It doesn't really reference anything else. So um, this graph, we have months of the year, and then we have the number of times something happened in that month. So we can compare those discrete numbers. Then we have line graphs. Line graphs are best used when we're looking at a trend over time. So we're looking at how something progresses compared to the time in which it took place. The benefit of a line graph is we can actually take multiple data sets and graph them on the same plane. And so here we have a graph where we have the progression through the year in months and we have multiple years graphed on the same graph so we can compare the years. This gives us a really good idea about what's happening throughout the year and what's happening between years. Then we have scatter plots. Scatter plots are where we take two different data sets and graph them on the same plane. And then we look to see if we can find any trends in that set of data. And when we do, we often add what we call a trend line. That trend line then allows us to kind of make a connection between those data sets. But it's important to remember that because we found a correlation does not mean we found causation. And then finally, we have histograms. Histograms are where we're taking a population and we're taking some kind of characteristic and we're breaking it out into subgroups of that population. So maybe we're looking at height in this graph and we're looking at maybe um, uh, maybe we're looking at like age or we're looking at something else, but we're taking the population and we're breaking it apart and we're looking for where the average might fall. This often results in a bell curve. That's where we have like this peak here in the middle and it looks kind of like a bell shape. And this is where we can assume our averages. And so these different types of graphs allow us to make conclusions about the data sets that we collect. So this ends our types of graphs discussion. Next, we're gonna be talking about how to make a graph.